After finishing Pokemon Ruby, we are now eight episodes deep into this challenge. And following Ruby is, of course, Pokemon Sapphire. Aside from the usual exclusives bestowed upon the titles, Sapphire also features a mix-up in the villain's organization. Instead of dealing with Maxi's Team Magma, we have to contend with Archie and Team Aqua. Naturally, their goals are flipped too, so C expansion and erasure of land masses are the goal this time. Insanity of a different flavor, got it. We got pretty close to a flawless leg last time, so I'm hoping we can rectify that as we get started here. Before Birch is jumped by Poochiana, we grab Mudkip's Pokeball and promptly make the save. Kip the Mudkip is far and away the best starter to run through this region with. Mudkip is so good in fact, that I plan on padding the roster with a couple less than reputable Pokemon. We can leave Buttermons open for future titles this way, most notably in the remakes when we reach Gen 6. Like last time, I make sure to level up just once before challenging Mei, and it goes as well as you'd expect. Mirroring Mei's Mudkip back in Ruby, we open with a crit this time. With the decks and Pokeballs in hand, it's time to get started. Our Route 101 encounter this time is Shenzi the Poochiena. Route 103 is where we find Zigzag the Zigzagoon, and we catch Kappa the Lotad on Route 102. Some brief training ensues, and we speed over to Petalburg City, escort Wally as he catches routes, and then move on. Twintail the Taylo joins us from Route 104 before we head into the Petalburg Woods and catch Looms the Shroomish. Man, this Devon Corp employee would be so jealous if we could tell him we did that. We'll just protect him from getting mugged by this grunt instead. Kip easily defeats Poochiana, and we defeat any trainers we see as we move on to Rustboro City. The first thing I do in Rustboro this time is take on its gym trainers with Kip. The gang then heads over to Route 106 for training. During the grind, we find and catch Minato the Ninkeda, who joins in Kappa's place. The trainers littered in the area provide good XP, and the team grinds to the cap, prioritizing speed and HP EVs. The game plan is simple. Water. Gun. Geodude is of course an Oko. On Nose Pass we do around half, so I switch to Mudslap, hoping it'll do enough to avoid a potion being used, but that doesn't pan out. Instead, I spam Water Gun relentlessly until we finally secure the KO. Kip evolves into Marsh Tomp, and we receive the Stone Badge. The Aqua Grunt makes the theft and kidnapping play, so we make the Poochie and a faint play, returning everyone's things to them. Briny takes us to Duford to deliver the letter to Steven, and we catch Doskoi the Makuhita along the way. Twintail, like Toilet before him, will be the lead for our Gym Trainer conquest before we get some grinding in. Shenzi evolves into Mightyena, and the team is ready to take on Brawly. Twintail is the lead, and Wing Attack does massive damage to Machop, who is healed up twice with Super Potions before going down. Even with the level increase, Wing Attack fails to Oko Makuhita, but it only uses bulk up before being taken out and earning us our second badge. We've got some really good momentum building up. One quick boat ride later and we are on Slateport City's beach again. All of the trainers here help the team grow before we try to make our delivery. Naturally, Team Aqua gets in the way, and defeating these grunts leads to our formal introduction to Archie. With them dealt with, we move on to Route 110, Catch Bolt the Electrike, and Minato evolves into Ninjask ahead of a battle with Mei. I kept a spot open out of habit so we also received Shedinja, but I don't really intend on trying to make Shedinja work on a team yet. Anyway, Mei time. I pivot out of Kippen into Looms immediately to deal with her lead Whalmer. Despite dealing good damage, Whalmer's rollout scares me into Doskoi who can resist and eventually KO with Arm Thrust. Numel gets one shot by Kip's Water Gun, and Twin Tails Wing Attack Oko's Grovile for the win. Moving on to Mauville, we defeat Wally and take on all the trainers we can in the gym. Battling the Windstraight family results in Twin Tail evolving into Swellow. I finally remember to pick up all of our essentials again and continue packing the nearby trainers up. We catch Thorn the Roselli on Route 117 and continue the grind, which leads to Looms evolving into Breloom. With the force of nature that is Kip, Watson isn't scary this time. Magnemite is an Oko with Mudshot, Voltorb hits for a whopping 7 damage total with Rollout before Mudshot Okos, and Magneton gets a Sonic Boom in before going down to Mudshot. See, this is what I think of when I say Mudkip is the best. Not my favorite of the three, but the best. A certain gym leader on the horizon prompts a gambling session, securing as many TMs as we can before beginning our long trek towards Lava Ridge. With Rock Smash granting us access to the area, we catch Lumps the Numo on Route 112. The steady supply of trainers to defeat on our way to Fall Arbor provides enough XP for Doskoi to evolve into the hefty Hariyama. 
We catch a Spinda that we name Dizzy on Route 113, and Route 114 is where we find and catch Cumulus the Swablu. When known as Altaria is scary because of circumstance. A dragon dancing, earth quaking, fully evolved Pokemon as your barrier to badge 6 is huge, but the average Altaria is nothing to write home about. It's for these reasons that Cumulus joins the gang, replacing Twintail. Entering Meteor Falls plays out the same way as before with the team's roles reversed, and we're prompted again to head to Mount Chimney. More importantly, we find and catch Croissant the Lunatone here, replacing Shenzi on the team. Lunatone is another Mon with a reputation for being kinda mid. Don't get me wrong, Mightyena isn't that great either, but I've never used a Lunatone before, and that's reason enough for them to swap places on the team. We head over to Mount Chimney with the new additions in tow, and take Team Aqua on. After wrecking the Grunt, we battle the admin, Matt. Doskoy sweeps through his entire team alone with Fake Out and Rock Smash, and we face off with Archie for the first time. Instead of making it erupt, he plans on using the Meteorite to cool Mount Chimney off for water to collect and create a new habitat. Pretty neat idea. Can't let him do that though. Minato leads against Mightyena, but Sand Attack continues to be a thorn in my side. I pivot into Doskoy who easily defeats it. I send Croissant out to deal with Golbat, but the Flinch Fusion strat forces a switch into Kip who KOs with Ice Beam. Thank you, Game Corner. Finally, Archie sends out his ace, Sharpedo. Doskoy gets the KO with Fake Out and Arm Thrust, averting the crisis. We defeat the trainers on the Jagged Pass before finally reaching Lava Ridge Town. Kip is destined to sweep the fire types, so he takes the lead as we battle the gym trainers. With an emphasis on attack EVs for our physical attackers, the team trains and challenges Flannery right after. Mudshot is an Elko on Slugmas 1 and 2, and Torkoal is sent out. Water Gun does good damage, and Body Slam hits for less in exchange. I switch to Mudslap, which does enough to avoid Flannery healing, so we tank one more Body Slam and KO with a crit Water Gun. Easy peasy. Some quick training to our next level cap ensues, starting in the sandstorm ridden desert of Route 111. We catch Goggles the Trapinch and find and pick up the Claw Fossil here. We're able to restore this fossil in Rustboro City, adding Karas the Anorith to the team in place of Looms. Armaldo is yet another Pokemon that is not nearly as good as it should be and will absolutely be carried by Kip. Karas trains to catch up and just like that, it's time to challenge Dad again. Flying in the face of what I just said about Lunatone earlier, I feel confident that its rock typing will see us through against Norman's monstrous team. I aim to put Slacken to sleep with Hypnosis and start bolstering Karis' defenses with Cosmic Power before I start to spam Psychic. Slacken has Yawn to trip us up and Faint Attack for super effective coverage, but this plan still turns out to be incredibly effective. After several boosts, Croissant is able to KO Slacking number 1, Vigoroth, and Slacking number 2 with HP to spare. Screw being carried by Kip, these shitters are proving their mettle. On the way to the next gym battle in Fortree, we pass through the jungle that is Route 119 and catch Banana the Tropius. Unlike the other baddies we've added to the team, I'm confident that Tropius will be dead weight when it really counts and is best used as an early ban here. Banana takes Minato's place, finalizing our team for the rest of this leg. This might be the longest we've had to go before getting all of our mainstays in order, and is a trend that'll continue as we ban more and more Pokemon for future titles. Up next is another entanglement with Team Aqua at the Weather Institute. The grunts aren't a problem and we quickly get into a battle with Shelly. Eager to prove herself, Banana takes point and is able to solo with Growth and Razor Leaf, clearing the team out of the building. Don't get used to it. Time to battle Mei again. Leading with Banana was a mistake here, so I pivot into Kip to KO Numel. I send Cumulus out to handle Grovile, getting the KO with some pecs, and finally send Banana back in to defeat Wilmer. We grab the Devon Scope from Steven and take on the Fortree Gym Trainers before training to the Cap and challenging Winona. Kip the Ever Reliable is the lead this time, and Ice Beam is an Oko on Swallow. Rock Tomb and Surf nab the KO on Pelipper, and Surf eventually KOs Skarmory, who gets healed partway through. Altaria outspeeds us and sets up Dragon Dance before living the Ice Beam and healing to full. God damn it, we're gonna wipe! Just kidding. Ice Beam crits after the heal and KOs. Kip is too good to let that Altaria win. On our way to Mount Pyre, Kip evolves into Swamper and we receive the Red Orb, failing to stop Team Aqua here and then in Slayport. We head over to Lily Cove and battle Mei for the last time. Doskoy laughs at the type matchup as he crushes Swellow. 
Doskoi then defeats Numel and Whalmer before handing things off to Banana, who KOs Grovile. A brutal way to end someone's career for sure. I'd hang it up for good if Atropius was what I lost to. We speed through Team Aqua's hideout again, picking up the Master Ball and battling Matt. Cumulus KOs Carvana with Fly, and Doskoi defeats Sharpedo. I send Kip in to defeat Mightyena before seeing the submarine depart. With that handled, we can move on to Moss Deep City, training to the cap to challenge Liza and Tate. Training leads to Karas evolving into Armaldo, and Cumulus evolving into Altaria, and we get our gym battle underway. Kip and Karas lead. Surf does big damage to Solrock and Lunatone, Soul Rock crits Kip with Psychic, and Karis just misses out on a Soul Rock KO with Ancient Power. Soul Rock is healed, and because of Calm Mind, Surf doesn't do as much damage to Lunatone, whose Psychic hits Karis hard. Ancient Power is able to pick up a KO on Lunatone though, and Kip's Surf finishes Soul Rock off on the next turn, earning us badge 7. Now it's time to stop Team Aqua from doing something stupid. As expected, the Grunts are fodder for the gang as we reach Shelly. Ancient Power Crit one-shots her Sharpedo, and I use Toxic before sending Cumulus in to defeat Mighty Enna. Like last time, we get to see a sleeping Kyogre before being challenged by Archie. Karas uses Toxic on Mighty Enna, who debuffs the crap out of us. I send Banana in to start to set up growth, but Swagger causes us to take too much damage before getting the KO. Banana is almost taken out by Crobat. Not sure why I stayed in, to be honest. So I switch into Cumulus. Cumulus is able to paralyze with Dragon Breath, then set up Dragon Dance, and eventually KO. I send Doskoi out to deal with Archie's ace, Sharpedo, and KO with ease. The Red Orb sends Kyogre into a frenzy, and the downpour is a tad more than Archie expected. Listen to this theme. See what I mean? Groudon's was so much more eerie. We make our way over to Sutopolis City and enter the Cave of Origin, catch Aqua the Kyogre, and save the day. All that's left now is to train up for a battle with Wallace. We clear out his Deviant Dungeon and make the attempt at badge number 8. Similarly to how Tengu handled things, I want Banana to set up growth and hopefully sweep Wallace's team. This is your one chance to prove yourself, bud. Banana is able to use growth four times before using the Person Berry and getting the Oko with Giga Drain. Celio is one shot. Milo took out speeds and uses Ice Beam before surviving the Giga Drain and being healed. <sighs> See, this is what I'm talking about. Absolute shitter. Giga Drain isn't enough, so we tank another Ice Beam and KO with Aerial Ace. Whiskash does paltry damage with Water Pulse before going down to Giga Drain, and Seeking is sent out. We don't have any Giga Drain uses left, so I use Body Slam while Seeking sets up the rain. I send Doskoi out who flinches with Fake Out. Wallace heals Seeking, so I start to use Strength before ultimately getting the KO with Rock Smash. That didn't need to go that way. I guess I should have tried to get a full 6 growths in, and then Banana could have swept. The team clears Victory Road, and we are challenged by Wally right at the end. Altaria uses Aerial Ace before Kip's Ice Beam Okos. Cumulus takes Kip's place and KOs Roselia with Fly. I start setting up Dragon Dance when Delcaddy is sent out, but it lands Sing and starts to chip away at us. We eventually wake up and KO with Earthquake, repeating the move on Magneton. Thanks to our Dragon Dances, Earthquake is able to eventually KO Gardevoir, despite the Cancerous double team spam that was starting up. I'm glad that was handled smoothly. Gardevoir could have gotten out of hand. The team does their final bout of training and gets prepped for the Elite Four. Doskoi takes point to battle Sydney. I use Fake Out then Belly Drum before healing with Chesto Rest. A crit plus 6 Brick Break obliterates Mighty Anna right afterwards. Shiftry tries to use Double Team, but doesn't dodge the Brick Break and goes down. Absol uses Snatch and is KO'd by Brick Break, and Cacturn uses Leech Seed before getting Brick Broke. Sharpedo uses Swagger, and we do end up hitting ourselves for insane amounts of damage. I switch into Banana and Giga Drain Okos, defeating Sydney. Good job, Banana. We don't really have anything straightforward for Phoebe, so Karis takes point to Toxic Stall. Dusclops number 1 curses us partway through, so I switch into Banana and use Growth and Giga Drain. We're cursed again, but Aerial Ace KOs right after. I send Doskoi out when Dusclops number 2 is sent out, then pivot into Kip to deal good old fashioned damage. To shed the debuffs we sustain, I switch back and forth between Cumulus and Kip and then finally KO with Earthquake. 
Bayonet is quaked right after, but Sableye survives and uses Attract. I send Banana in as Phoebe heals, and use Synthesis and Growth while tanking Shadow Ball. Giga Drain offsets our damage, we set up some more, and finish this nuisance off. Banana is eventually able to KO the final Bayonet and end the battle. This was probably always going to be the most annoying battle of the four with this team of ours, but I'm glad Banana got to beat the useless allegations for a while. Doskoi leads again as we battle Glacia. Brick Break Oko's Glalie number one and Celio number one, and I pivot into Karas against Celio number two, knowing it can use a track, which, surprise surprise, it tries using. Ancient Power doesn't KO, but gets the Omni Boost, so I then use Protect to block Die from connecting. Celio is healed, but Ancient Power KOs right after. Walrein manages to survive the Ancient Power, but can't KO with Surf thanks to our boosts, so Return and Ancient Power finish it off. Finally, Glalie goes down to Ancient Power for the win. There were lots of different ways we could have swept here, but that was not the one I was expecting at all. Time to battle Drake. Croissant leads with Ice Beam and Oko Shell Gone. Drake sends his ace Salamence out immediately after, and Crunch hits hard, but Ice Beam is an Oko. We eat our Citrus Berry, tank Crunch from Flygon, and Oko with Ice Beam. Croissant outspeeds Altaria, and Oko's with Ice Beam. I pivot into Kip on the final Flygon who uses Sandstorm, and then Dig. When it resurfaces, Ice Beam is an Oko, and Drake is downed. Being Deathless ahead of our final battle is becoming the norm as we head forth and challenge Steven. To start, it's Cumulus vs Skarmory. Skarmory is burned by Flamethrower and uses Steel Wing before going down next turn. Claydol is next, so I pivot into Kip who tanks Ancient Power. Claydol outspeeds and uses Light Screen which neuters our Surf's damage. We start to go back and forth before Steven switches Aggron in. Aggron simply just dies, and Cradley is sent out. I use Protect to assess how Cradley will attack. It's trying to Giga Drain. I send Karis in and use Toxic, tanking Giga Drain, and then get confused. I switch into Doskoi who shrugs off Ancient Power, then Fake Out. Sludge Bomb poisons us before Brick Break KOs. When Armaldo is sent out, I pivot into Croissant who lands Hypnosis. I start using Calm Mind and KO with Psychic after Ancient Power forces us to use our Citrus Berry. The Ace Metagross is sent out next. I have no clean switch-ins, and Croissant will definitely go down to Meteor Mash, so I ultimately decide to send Doskoi in, who survives the hit it takes, but balls to poison chip damage. Ah, uh, someone had to go down I guess, but damn does that sting. Thanks to this at least, I can send in Kip who KOs with two Earthquakes, tanking an Earthquake and dodging a Hyper Beam that certainly would have killed us. Claydol is sent back in and we hang on with 23 HP before Surf connects and ends the battle. I'll come out and say it. Half of the team was terrible. Even with setup moves or boosts and ample uses of them, they just simply failed to deliver. And when it came down to it, I had no choice but to let at least one Pokemon faint in order to take Metagross out. Despite all of that, I loved these guys. This was another really unique array of Pokemon for me, and I'm glad I was able to clear the leg and get the Mudkip, Makuhita, Swablu, Anorith lines, as well as Lunatone and Tropius band here. Let's see what Pokemon has in store for us next time.